driving the animal car is a rewarding experience because you have to operate the car. And being so small, it really feels like an extension of you, especially with the gear lever here on your leg. Amilcar is a great name that's not known to a lot of people. And that's a shame because in its heyday, which was brief, Amilcar made some of the most interesting and, and unique cars on the road. The car I'm driving today is an Amilcar GCS. This was a sporting model in the category of what the French call a voiturette with a thousand cc four-cylinder engine, three-speed transmission, very light, very agile, and it was conceived in the same manner as the Bugatti Brescia. Very flexible, lightweight cars that came from a new tradition, because heretofore it had always been thought the way to performance and fun was with a big engine and a big car. And these Lachurettes, give absolutely outrageous performance and fun for their size. These cars are raced throughout Europe in circuit races, in hill climbs, and in endurance events. A very good friend of mine, a very brave and intrepid soul named Ed Gottschalk, ran his Amilcar GCS in the Mille Miglia a number of years ago. In the pouring rain, he finished and was classified, and he counts as one of those great brave drivers of the time that would do that. For me, I think just a drive like this on a small country road, which might have been in France, in Italy, in Germany, in Spain, gives to me the full measure of what the joy is of this car. It's not a big car, clearly, it's a car that's no bigger than it needs to be. And that's the thing that's absolutely wonderful about this animal car. You know, I'm proud the Audrain Museum has chosen Jay Leno's car care products as the official car care product of the uh, Concorde. You know, you're not supposed to use that in direct sunlight. Yeah, but I'm working on my tan, Jay. Okay, hard to get help. The driving position is interesting with the pedals very close and the brake directly underneath the steering column. So you have to be wearing driving shoes or something else to actually pilot the car well. The control area is very limited as you might expect in a car this small. The gearbox is a very good friend of your leg. The gear lever rather is a very good friend of your leg. And to take your foot off of the clutch to make sure you're not riding it, I'm pushing my knee right next to the steering column. So as a distance racer in a car like this, I'm not quite sure how I'd qualify, although I think it'd be amazing fun to drive this in a spirited but not aggressive manner for a few days on a tour or rally. Getting back to Amilcar, they were very good at making small cars. And as the expression goes, shoemaker stick to your last, they didn't. And in the early 1930s, they began to make bigger cars just at the wrong time. Of course, the worldwide depression was just taking hold and Amel cars, bigger cars, really not that good, quite frankly. So as is often the case, the company repositions itself to a place where nobody wanted it. And by the beginning of World War II, the company was just about gone. And of course, it never came back after the war. But it left a great legacy. This model, the GCS, and the even sleeker and more powerful GCSS, or Steel Basse, lowered with a bigger engine, were really great competitors in the Vaturite classes and races wherever they entered. And this example also carries a really beautiful body 
from a coach builder near Paris. And it just has such an incredible spirit of adventure. You know, the, the fellow who bought this car knew, or the woman who bought this car knew, was probably also an aviator and probably painted on the side and uh, certainly was a creative sort. And speaking of creative sorts, of course, the saddest thing about Amilcar is that Amilcar is connected with a very famous motoring tragedy. Most people think that the dancer Isidore Duncan was killed in a Bugatti. It was actually an Amilcar, one just like this, where she was riding as a passenger and her long scarf got caught in the rear wheels and strangled her. That's why I'm not wearing a scarf. A bow tie is a much safer thing to use when you're driving an ammo car. So, here's to you, Isadora. Here's to this ammo car. It's great fun. I love it. Driving the ammo car is a rewarding experience because you have to operate the car. And being so small, it really feels like an extension of you, especially with the gear lever here on your leg, your feet very close together, my knee, touching the outside door skin, uh, since shouldn't say door skin, because of course there's only one door in the car on the passenger side. The driver climbs through because of the location of the spare tire. But it's an active little thing. These wonderful skinny tires, you always know what the car is going to do. It's always talking to you. As part of our program of preserving, celebrating, and sharing automotive history, the Audrain took this car to the UK for the Cartier Style and Luxe Concours at Goodwood, where it was greatly admired in a special class of ammo cars. It's also something to remember what vintage motoring was all about. This is a car with a top speed of 75 miles per hour, which probably would feel about like 200 or so. But, you know, at 40 miles per hour, it just gives you such a thrill and you are literally in the elements. You are outside. Ammo car, je suis Innamorato. Je suis Amilcar, I'm in love with you. No matter what the language.